shopping for shoes. As I've said many times, mom was the glue that held our family together. And she made sure as many of our deeds were met as possible. However, dad was the one who usually took us shopping for shoes. If you're having a hard time picturing my dad frequently frequenting atomic hand store, famous footwear, or even Payless shoe source with his five kids in tow, you are right to be skeptical because his favorite place to find shoes was the skating rink. It's kind of ingenious when you think about it. Kids take off their shoes for several hours, so you have plenty of time to survey the selection and find the perfect size and style. You just leave your old shoes in the slot and walk away. It was certainly less stressful than the eat and run. This is just one example of the crazy things that happen to families in poverty that most people don't know about. People don't understand that kids are taught to do these things. Just like any animal teaches its offspring to survive, parents in poverty teach their kids how to survive any way they can. Anyone trying to teach these children a better way must remember that their efforts are being undone at home. If you are going to break that cycle of poverty, you need to work with more than the children. You have to work with the parents too. How do you help parents feel a sense of pride that they actually bought shoes for their children? Even if they are cheap, vinyl shoes that cost $7.99 and will only last a short time. How do you get kids to work hard for something when they've done it the easy way their entire life? This is a hard concept for some people to understand. They just get mad and blame the kids, or they blame the family. They don't understand that generational poverty involves indoctrination over many years. This is what we're up against. Please, don't think it's impossible. I've seen it turn around. I've seen a teacher work with one student where he or she builds a relationship and shows the child all the possibilities that are out there. Part of that change process requires an understanding that a successful life requires dedication, a strong work ethic, and the determination to stay with something longer than one day or one week. In poverty, we think about one week or sometimes one day at a time. If dad can find the money, we'll eat tonight. We'll eat all of it and be hungry tomorrow. And then the next drama unfolds where we'll try to find the money again. That's just the way life works. I want to help people in these situations. And to help them, I need to show them how to see life bigger, not one day at a time, but years at a time. That's the unfair advantage that people with wealth have. They see a big picture. They know how it's going to play out over five years, and they plan carefully. They don't eat everything every day. They parse things out. That's financial literacy. That's not easy, and it's more than balancing a checkbook. Helping people understand how to manage money is a daunting task. If you want to give someone living in poverty a gift, financial literacy is the best gift you can give. This is why I like to work with kids to build their own businesses, so they start seeing how money works, how selling works, how marketing works. They learn firsthand how long it takes to build up cash reserves and how stupid it is to spend it all at one time. They learn how to be careful with money so it sticks with them as a friend. Deb is fond of, is fond of saying that. How do you get money to stick to you so you're not always broke, always starting anew every single day? Once you learn that important lesson, your days of shopping for shoes at the skating rink will end.